I'm beginning construction of my rotary displacers. I'm actually going to make the rotary displacers out of this baking pan. Um, the metal's a nice thickness. It actually cost it cheaper than uh, the hobby metal usually costs. So I've got quite a bit more metal here for the same price or less. I'm still making my plan the same size as a standard sheet of uh, the metal you'd buy from like a hobby store. So in case someone wanted to go with that. So that's just on. Cut out my two sheets. Basically they're going to be bent and held in place a lot like uh, my toy mailbox was uh, with, the, with the wood frame. I have my panels for my first displacer cut out. Put a bend in one already. Um, there's going to be a small lip on each side that uh, is going to be bent and that will help hold it in place once it's in the uh, frame. So to do that I'm simply putting it in a vise, leaving a little bit of the line above, securing it, putting my bend in, <sighs> then finishing the crease with I guess my bend in. Here's a prototype of what it's going to look like that I made out of paper, just to see the size of things. Now because I didn't really account for the thickness of the metal, I may end up having to adjust my frame a bit. Cutting these out, I did a little clumsily. Uh, at first I tried with the Tim Snips and that was kind of bending things too much. So I ended up taking it on the scroll saw and cutting it out that way. But uh, in the end it worked out alright, it should be fine. To shape the metal, I've made this, just a arch here, and I'm going to first start by kind of shaping and bending the metal around it, and as I progress, this will actually probably do pretty good, I can go a step further and put in a vise with this. I guess I and the result is we have it shaped pretty good for the displacer. Just there. You can see here. We need a little more bend on those ends. So we can clamp that a little bit and force it. Now that I have my metal pieces bent and shaped, I'm going to cut out two end pieces that are going to go over the ends of the metal uh, from quarter inch oak. I don't really know how I'm going to cap the ends, so I'm going to make some small pilot holes uh, to screw caps on the ends. These will be two small strips that will actually pack in between these two, separating the two halves of the hot and cold. So I'll get this cut out. Okay, before we glue or paint or do anything else, we have to make sure everything fits together. So I'm going to start by kind of putting these pieces in here, and if they don't fit, it's kind of going on like a spindle sander. I have an attachment for my my uh, drill press. Just widen it slightly. A little bit all the way around goes a long ways. So let me put these guys in here. Slide those in. Line it up. That will be the rotary displacer, or at least the rotary displacer cylinder. This place will go in here, of course, and spin. I haven't worked out exact details on how I'm going to do the end caps yet. This is a pretty good start. Looking good. I spray painted the wooden pieces with the uh, engine block paint. That's good to 
good up until uh, 500 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the reasons I do that is because uh, the silicone I'm going to use to assemble everything and seal it actually uh, doesn't stick that well to wood, but it sticks extremely well to that paint. That's something I noticed when I was building my uh, beer bottle 2 engine. Things have dried up real nice. We got a good seal. I did have to go back in a couple spots and force more silicone into a, a couple gaps, but things are look like they're going to be pretty good. It was a little warped on one spot. I could have did better there. But uh, what I'm going to do now, because in my mind, I'm going to get better air transfer if I have a nice uh, roughed up surface from uh, like a spindle sander attachment in my drill press here. I'm going to try to keep the, the grooves that I'm going to make or the roughness and you know kind of straight in a circle around on the inside. That should increase the surface area and transfer of uh, heat to air. up inside. I'm going to end the segment here. In the next segment I'm going to work on the end caps. Try to make it so there's a window on one side so we can see when the displacer is spinning. And uh, perhaps the uh, at least the airflow to a, a single point where we maybe could do a test attachment to make sure the displacer is airtight. Thanks for watching.